This is going to be the first video in a series of videos. There may be two or three that are over series and convergence. Uh, in this first clip, we're going to look at um, geometric series. And those are the form where you have the sum from 0 to infinity of a times r to the n power. r is the ratio of change per term. If the absolute value of r is 1 or greater, then the series will diverge, and you can't pinpoint the sum of it. However, if the ratio's absolute value is less than 1, then it will be a convergent geometric series, and it will have a sum, and the formula is given at the bottom. It's the first term divided by 1 minus the ratio or rate of change from one term to the next. Uh, looking at our first example, we have a geometric series that is the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 2 thirds to the n. Now to make it look like it's really in the f format of that first slide, I'm going to rewrite it. We do have n starting at 0, going to infinity, but I'm going to put a 1 here just so that there's a visible a value. Okay. So if you recognize that it's in a geometric series format, then we have a equals one, r is negative two thirds, The absolute value of that is positive two-thirds, which is less than one. So we have a convergent geometric series where A is equal to one and R is equal to negative two-thirds. Okay, so we can go ahead and say it converges. The sum is going to be 1 over 1 minus negative 2 thirds, which is 1 over 1 minus 2 thirds is 5 thirds which gives us a sum of three-fifths. So if you were to add up all the terms, infinitely many, that series at the top left would have a finite sum of three-fifths. There are times when maybe the bottom number is not starting at zero. I wanted to show you a little trick where you can modify the original problem. For example, if you want that index to start at zero, you can change it to zero. We're gonna take three away from the original. And if you take away three from the index, you've gotta add three to the sequential term. So it'll make it n plus 3 as your power. And now we've got the sigma notation where we want it. n equals 0 to infinity. Now we just have to make sure we can identify the a and the r and determine if r still has an absolute value less than 1. If it does, we have a convergent series, and we have a nice formula to find the sum. A power of n plus 3 using exponent properties You can split that up into negative two-thirds cubed times negative two-thirds to the n. And let me just jot that down. A to the m plus n is equal to a m 
times a n. So I just use an algebraic exponent property. It never hurts to see it though. Okay. A is the original or the, the first term of the series. R absolute value of it is less than one just like on the previous problem the absolute value of negative two-thirds is two-thirds which is less than one so we can go ahead and come claim that this is a convergent geometric series and it will have a finite sum of numerator a is negative two-thirds cubed over 1 minus r, which is, again, negative 2 thirds. Negative 2 thirds cubed is negative 8 twenty sevenths. Denominator of 5 thirds. Negative 8 27ths times 3 fifths converted to a fraction is negative 8 40 fifths. Which would be the sum of this particular geometric series. Sometimes you have a geometric series that's in disguise or hidden, and with a little bit of investigation, you find out that you can write it in the form a r to the n summed from zero to infinity. This one, all the numbers in the list appear to be powers of two. We have two cubed, two squared, 2 to the first, 2 to the 0. Now, if this original list kept going, our next value would be 1 half, and then 1 fourth, and so on. So that would be 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the negative 2, and so on. We can clearly tell that we've got powers of two being added together. So let's see if we can't write that in a geometric format. Our first term was eight, but let's do better than that. Let's see if we can't come up with the ratio. These are changing by powers of 2, but they're decreasing. Now, if n starts at 0, I believe this will give us each term. If you start with 0, 2 to the 3 minus 0 is 2 to the 3rd, and that's 8. Then when you move your index up to 1, 3, or excuse me, 2 to the 3 minus 1 is 2 squared. That's our second term. Move up, n equals 2. 2 to the 3 minus 2 is 2 to the first. Sure enough, we've got our pattern. Using our exponent properties, much like we did on the previous slide, when there's a minus sign, Instead of multiplying, you divide. That gives us 8 as our first term, 2 cubed. Actually, I'm just going to write it one more time. And then our ratio 
is 1 over 2 to the n, which is 1 half to the n. Okay, so a is 8, which matched our first term. Every number is half of the one in front of it. So as you go through the original series, up at the top row written in black, the, the very next number each time is half of the one before it. So we actually have the right ratio of one half. That ratio's absolute value is less than one, so we have a convergent geometric series. And once we know it's convergent, the sum is A over one minus R, the first term over one minus the rate of change, which eight over a half is 16. Very good. Very good. So that one was a hidden geometric series. Okay, let's try to tie it all together. We know that this geometric series is going to converge. It already has a ratio of one half. Let's do a little bit better. If I take one away from the index, I've got to add one to the power. Okay, 1 over 2 to the n is the same as 1 half to the n because 1 to the n just stays 1. One half times one half to the n. The first half has an understood one for a power, so I broke that n plus one up into one half to the one, and then one half to the n. A is half, r is half, less than one. Mm, starting to get cluttery there. Let me. Let me take it back off, do a little better job. There we go. Okay, but anyway, we know it converges. If that ratio, instead of being a half, if that ever comes out to like three halves or five thirds, some ratio that's either one or larger, then this is going to be considered a divergent geometric series, and there is no sum defined. These sums only apply if you know it converges. So our sum for this one is going to be A over 1 minus R. Let's see, what's half over half? That's 1. So that one has a real clean sum. Now, let's go back and think of this same series in individual parts. We had the exact same series. And what was the sum we determined? One. Where we just calculated A over 1 minus R. Now what I mean by that is I'm going to rewrite the problem in its original form. Okay, so I'm going to make a list of partial sums. What we found at the very end was the sum of all of them, but partial sums like S sub 1, that's just the first term, so if we plug in a one, one over two to the first, that's one half. The second partial sum is 
the sum of the first two. So we have a half from the first. Then the second term is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. Okay, so that's 3 fourths when you add. S to the third, or the third partial sum, that's going to be the sum of the first three terms. Our first term's a half. Our second term was one-fourth. Now, if you move it to three, one over two cubed is one-eighth. And the sum of all those is seven-eighths. If we keep going, we can find the nth term. Let's investigate our answer so far. We have one half, three fourths, these are our partial sums so far, and seven eighths. The denominators are all powers of 2, which if you look at the original problem, that's very clear. The denominator is powers of 2. The numerator is always one less than the denominator. Like if we had calculated S sub 4, the fourth partial sum, we would have wound up with 15 sixteenths. So it's the denominator minus 1. If the limit of your partial sums as n goes to infinity then the, excuse me, let me, let me rephrase it. If the sequence of partial sums converges or has a finite limit, then the series, which is the very original problem, converges and has that same sum. So let's take the limit of this nth partial term, nth partial sum term, 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n. When n gets really large, the minus 1 doesn't really count that much. Two to the n, if you look at your dominant terms over two to the n, that's equal to one. That's finite. That's great news. Let's go back to the slide right before this one, which is exactly what we found on this one. I mean, it's the same series, so it should have the same one, but for example, if this had not been a geometric series, we wouldn't have had a nice formula to go by. If you don't have a nice setup like a geometric series, then you make a list of partial sums and look at the sequence like we, our sequence was one half, three fourths, seven eighths. If that sequence converges to a finite number when n gets really large, then that finite number, in our case one, is the actual sum of that series.